There is one thing that a lot of traditional JRPGs, and RPGs in general, have in common. Travelling is boring. While the worlds are often fantastical, the stories thrilling and epic, the combat encounters diverse and challenging, the simple act of getting from A to B is, for want of a better word, tedious. I know it's probably a symptom of my self-inflicted constant need for stimulation, but every time I enter a town or dungeon only to be told I need to go to another town or dungeon halfway across the fucking world, I die a little inside. It's dull. You push the direction pad and mentally check out until it's time to fight another selection of creeps unwilling to let you mind your own business. Travel feels very much like an afterthought in many of these games. All points pooled into visual splendour, or writing, or combat, or anything other than the thing you will spend the bulk of your time doing. Moving. Which is why it was so refreshing to play a modern iteration of this genre and realise that there's a very simple solution to this. Sea of Stars is a very traditional JRPG, its most clear inspiration being of course Chrono Trigger. I can't say if the game itself will hold up well as a good example of the genre, it's a bit derivative and the writing leaves a lot to be desired, but it's certainly well made. The combat is punchy and interactive, the visuals have these neat little flourishes that feel more like a desire to flesh out the world than just simply showing off. It's a good time. But where it truly sings is in how it handles navigation. Sea of Stars is set in a world with highly diverse topography. A game of peaks and depths, there is a huge variation in elevations to the places you move through. As a result, you are never more than a few moments away from hopping gaps, clambering up inclines, dropping down through holes, teetering across tight ropes, grappling across chasms, and even being yeeted by one of these big guys. It feels great, and it's supported by some brilliantly designed spaces intercut with carefully curated combat encounters where on occasion your method of traversal plays a part in how you engage with your enemies. It's also incredibly well paced, at times feeling more like Sabotage Studios' previous work The Messenger than the games it draws direct inspiration from, which in itself feels like one great big lesson about taking what you learned from one genre and applying it to another. I don't really have a lot else to say about it, it's a really bloody good time and I think it will please a lot of fans of this particular category of games, but I had to make a point about how much this way of breaking up the monotony of travel is a breath of fresh air. It makes me excited to explore these places rather than simply push through them. That's good game design.